Today's video is kindly sponsored by Simply Safe. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are building something that I've never attempted to build before. This is going to be a first for me, and that is a range hood cover. Above your oven, you typically have some sort of range hood or something that kind of collects and filters, you know, your cooking, air, smoke, steam, particles and that's the goal today is to make the big huge chunky box up here look nice and pretty now i do have a couple ideas in my head they're definitely not your traditional style of range hood i want to do something unique something different something unexpected because i'm also going to be plastering whatever the range hood is to match the wall treatment that we currently have going on this right here is my range hood insert to be honest with you guys i have no idea what i'm doing but we are gonna make it work. Oh, okay, let's see what it looks like. <gasps> Wait. Oh, I was like, I did not want this to be white. It's just covered in plastic. <laughs> it's giving ventilation. Imagine this right here. That looks good, I think. framework of our vent hood cover. I'm just going to be using some 2x4 boards from the hardware store, nothing too crazy, and I'm going to be measuring the width of our vent hood insert, and I'm adding three inches to that. That's going to account for uh, the pieces that we're going to add on the sides to create a full box. So as you can see, this is going to be the front horizontal piece that's going to go on the front side. I'm just tracing that onto the board, and I'm going to cut out four of these because we're going to need four both on the top and bottom to create the framework. And then I cut out four remaining pieces that are going to be the left and right sides of our framework. I got this clamp here. I saw McKenna use it in our videos on cabinets. It's a 90 degree clamp. So basically we're building the bottom frame right now out of the pieces that we cut. Then you're going to put your clamp and press it all the way down until it locks. And it has your perfect 90 degree angle for you. So you can just screw right in. Our piece. Not sure if it fits. Why doesn't it fit? So I believe the wood was just a little bit warped, so I actually undid one side. That way I was able to put the frame over the box, and then I screwed it in with the help of Justin. So we were both able to press this around the box, and then I screwed it back together, and that was perfect. All right, guys, so the bottom frame is complete, and as you can see, it wraps around. I do need to screw it in here and here, but probably gonna do that a bit later. We're gonna create the top frame, and then create the vertical pieces that are going to attach the bottom to the top. Now trying to figure out how much I want the range hood to drop. So originally I was kind of thinking 24, which would be to here, but I'm actually thinking we can get away with 22 to give us more shelf space here. So we're gonna drop it 22 inches. I'm gonna take the height measurement, which is 22 inches, and I'm gonna subtract that by six, and we're gonna be cutting out four of those for our vertical pieces, and I actually picked up a pocket hole jig, which I'm so excited about. I've always wanted one of these, and I've seen so many people use them, so I finally got one, and these are incredible. So it actually allows you to create pocket holes so that you can easily insert like boarding or create structures without having to use L brackets or any other sort of like, you know, connection point. This is just so incredible incredible to create a nice clean framework that's durable and strong. The frame is complete! That's actually kind of easy. Alright, so we brought the range hood base in here. It's laying across two pieces of wood on the marble because it is pretty heavy with all these two by fours. It's definitely quite a bit heavy. And we're going to be putting a wood cleat up here. That way when we lift this up, it has something to sit on.
my gosh, you guys, look, it looks like culinary. I also use a pocket hole jig to drill directly through my top board to create an area for me to then screw into, into the ceiling joist. So as you can see here, this is gonna pull it right up and secure it to the ceiling. Look at this carpentry, it's mounted. I can honestly hang from this. Ow, I hurt my finger. So I found this material here, it's called Polywall. I've never heard of it before, but I think we're gonna be able to use this to create the shape of the piece. It's super flexible, and then we're also gonna create like a structure underneath using some lattice trim. We are back from the hardware store, went to Lowe's quickly, and I wanted to share with you kind of my thoughts for the edge of this. So we have our box frame here, but what I'm thinking, instead of doing like something interesting on the front, which a lot of people do, I actually want to do something interesting on the sides and almost make this look like it's plastered into the wall. So I want to create a rounded corner here, rounded, and then have it flow into nothing. So it kind of like protrudes out, flows, flows, and it's all plastered into the wall. So I kind of have this little box here that I want to start drawing a rough template shape on. And I'm just going to put it up in the top and just roughly draw what I'm kind of picturing in terms of the shape. So this is our rough shape and I'm going to use some rounded edges just to kind of round out the design and make it a little bit more perfected. This reminds me so much of when I was in fashion school because you basically would create these rounded curves and then you would go back in with your rulers and like perfect them. This is exactly what we did when we do pattern making. Once the template was created, I transferred that over to just some plain plywood with a pencil and I'm going to be using a jigsaw to cut that out and I suggest cutting two pieces out at once, that way you have your sides perfect. They're both going to be exactly the same on either side. We're just going to need two supports for each side, so I'm cutting those out, then I'm securing them to the sides of our framework and the wall using pocket holes added the little side shape onto our box and this is kind of our first piece so I actually did two pocket holes here in the back and on the back here to attach it to the wall and then fix it to the side boards there The guides are on both sides and now we're essentially building the skeleton which is going to be created from these trellis boards and so they're just cut down and we're going to be nailing these all around the outside to create the shape but make it more of an actual form. Whenever you want to do a custom shape, I always suggest doing like a framework and then going in with some molding over top to create almost like a skeleton. So I'm using trellis and I'm also using just some quarter inch wooden dowels on the tighter curves just to get some nice shape to it. And I'm just nailing those to the top and bottom pieces. You can also add a middle support if you feel like you need it, but mine was extremely secure so I felt like I didn't need it. It's going to use some joint compound on the underside to fill in those holes, any of the cracks. So as you can see, there's like a line here. I already filled this one in on the other side. And we're also putting some drywall tape around this edge here and putting a little bit of joint compound here as well, just to create more of a solid edge and letting it dry so that tomorrow we could put the top coat on and then the plaster. I made Justin stop the car because look what I found on the street. Why is this cute though? This is very cute. Is it not? Look, it's a pillow up there. 
It's a pillow, but why would it not have storage inside of it? I honestly don't really like the pillow. Like, I feel like I would rather keep this as like some sort of table situation, like yeah. an upholster. Oh wait, is it soft in there? It's a little soft and it's a little wet. She's damp. Honestly though, she's cool. Let's get her. month I installed the Simply Safe security system in my new home, but as a lot of you guys know if you've been around on the channel for a while, I actually had one of these in my apartment for about two and a half years and I just love my Simply Safe home security system and if you are in the market for one or even if you are not, honestly you should take advantage of the amazing offer they have right now because they're offering you guys up to 40% off any new system orders, which is absolutely crazy. That's a huge discount, which we love of course, and I will also say that this system is so extremely easy to integrate in your home. It's actually shipped in a box directly to your doorstep, so there's no need to go out and get it, which is really convenient. And I will say that the setup of the system takes you an hour. It is so simple and easy, and they have entry sensors for everything, or sensors and monitors for everything, including like your doors and windows, temperature sensors, HD cameras, both indoor and outdoor. There's motion sensors, everything. They got you covered, you guys. Plus, they're in a long-term contract, so you can start and stop whenever you would like to with no hidden fees. And believe it or not, for less than a dollar a day, you're going to get around the clock protection with Simply Safe, which I just think is such an incredible deal. Having peace of mind knowing that you, your family, your personal belongings are safe and sound, especially now that Simply Safe has their Fast Protect technology, which is just improving the alarm experience and delivering an exceptional emergency response. It's a great Christmas gift, and at 20% off, you can customize and create your very own home security system using the link at the top of my description box below. Because there's really no safe like Simply Safe. Good morning, everyone. It is day two of our vent hood transformation, which is happening up here. Framework looks amazing so far, and I actually did a little bit more work on it last night, so I want to share with you kind of what we did after the camera died. So if you guys can see, went through and added this tape here, which is just folded up and around, and then added some joint compound on that just to create more of an actual edge here so we can kind of start creating the shape on the bottom. But we do need to finish off the front here and then also connect up the ductwork up here. So I picked this up this morning. It is a four to six inch reducer. Good, like that. I just attached this tube, which is of course leading outside, and I'm gonna use actual duct tape, duct, it's really called duct tape, to put around this, which is a metal tape, just to tape off the tube. Like, I understand why it's called duct tape now. Duct tape, for the literal duct. It's like a metal tape. picked up some boards this morning that had a half inch thickness and I'm going to add one to the bottom front and I'm nailing that down with my brad nailer. Then I'm going to add four pieces to the middle just to create a structure across the front of the middle. fun part. We are now using liquid nails and I'm going to be putting this across all of my front boards. So anything that our poly board is going to be attached to, I'm adding the liquid nails. Then I'm putting this up and I made sure to cut this on the eight foot length because I want this to be one fluid piece across our entire, you know, front of the range hood. So I'm using some brad nails on a really light setting just to set some nails into there to hold it into place. And then I'm adding liquid nails all the way across and we're bending and forming this poly board around the framework that we created to then create more of a seamless smooth kind of look to the piece that's going to be able to then be plastered so adding this liquid nails to the left side as well and as you can see just wrapping this around using brad nails to secure to the top and bottom kind of skeleton pieces that we created and then i'm going to go in with some scissors at the end to trim off any excess and a razor blade to really finish it off and make sure everything's nice and smooth across the bottom Look, 
you guys added on our top layer and as you can see it's a bit wonky but do not worry we're gonna be fixing this plasters going over the top and that's really gonna finish and polish off all of our edges this is what the other side looks like over here now what I'm going to actually do is do our first coat of primer we're doing kind of a two-step prime we're gonna first go in with the Zinsser bullseye one two three primer for all surfaces I've used this a trillion times on my channel and I love this it just goes all over everything it creates like an area for anything to stick to so we're gonna prime with this first then with the quartz primer that we used when we did the wall treatment and then the plaster after time to plaster. I'm excited. I'm also a little nervous. This is what our form is looking like. Look how beautiful that looks. I told you guys we were going to get it looking great before starting the plaster. And now it is time for plaster, which is going to be the exact application done on the walls just with the trowel and smoothing it once it kind of gets a little bit dried down. I actually ended up grabbing the product in gallons today. So this is what it looks like in a gallon form. I know I shared it with you last time in a bucket, but I just got two gallons to finish off the range hood up here. And then we just need one more coat in the underside of this arch as well. In case you didn't watch one of my last videos, I actually plastered all the walls in my kitchen in the same material, so I'll add a card above that you can check out to see how I did that. But I'm just using the same plaster on the front of this vent hood and making sure on the edges to just get it right up close to the edge and nice and smooth along all of our corners. Then again, I ain't never had someone to hold. hood is drying as you could see and I'm about to mount the rod the uh, brass rod that's gonna be going behind here I'm so excited about the pot rail it's gonna be going right underneath the shelf underneath our vent hood and everything's just working out so nicely so far so this morning I picked up a masonry bit meant for stone we're going to go ahead and drill this into the marble I've never done that before <laughs> We drilled one hole after about 25 minutes, so that's great. Hi guys, it's been about mm, two hours. And we got one part of the pot rack up. It was an extreme challenge. So we're gonna finish this other side off camera and then I'm gonna catch up with you guys in the morning and share with you what it looks like. Good morning, you guys. I was up last night until about 2.30 editing this video. It's actually Thursday morning right now, the day this is going up. 
I have been just so excited about this vent hood. You are going to freak out when I flip the camera and show you how I just styled up this vent hood area or like the little, I guess, oven section of the kitchen. I just have to show it to you. I'm gonna do a pan up. Oh, <gasps> how stunning does this look, you guys? I just did like a quick little styling, literally threw what I had. I had a couple branches, threw them in this pot, added a couple bits here. We added the rod last night across the backsplash. And of course our oven is gonna be going here, which is currently on order. I will let you guys know about that uh, shortly. Added Arvin's little Onda bowl and it looks so good. I'm so happy with the plaster. Now, of course this is just our first coat, but it does give you guys an idea. I do have to go in, clean up these edges. I'm gonna start doing the second coat today, which I'll definitely share with you what that looks like in the next video. We still do have a little wet spot here. It's currently dry down but this looks unreal I am so happy with the shape of this vent hood it's exactly what I wanted it to look like and everything is just coming along beautifully like just look how stunning cooking right here would be I have no words I truly have no words I wanted to share with you guys how this kind of feels and sounds as well it's like perfect now it is just time to get the stove, and that is today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. I love the way that the vent hood turned out. I think it might be my favorite thing in the kitchen. I don't know if it's topping the marble or not. Like, it, it's probably not. The marble was more expensive, so I like the marble more. But I will catch you all in my next video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon if you don't have that bell icon turned on because it's actually gonna notify you whenever I upload new videos. And you can also follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, both of which are Lone Fox Home. And last but not least, do not forget to check out Simply Safe. They're having their biggest sale, your new home security system, which is incredible. The link for that is at the top of the description box below, and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye!